Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. I think science and education is critically important, much less so for the, perhaps even for the future scientists and engineers, but just for society in general. So many decisions that we make today need to be made, made on a sound scientific basis, and I think a lot of society has very little understanding of science, very little understanding of of just how uh, inaccurate certain things are, and if they had a better understanding, I think we would make better decisions, including our public policymakers. At Bayer, we, we run a volunteer program called Making Science Make Sense. We send volunteers, our scientists, out from our offices to the neighboring schools, and they teach science the way science is really performed, and that is hands-on. Um, they're, 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 and the idea is to get students early in their, uh, in their studies engaged and excited about science so that they can uh, have an interest in becoming a scientist or an engineer one day. Certainly I would describe myself as more of a coach than a player, so I don't micro, micromanage my, uh, my executives. Uh, I hold them accountable, but I, I coach them through the, uh, the tough situations. I, uh, I believe in being hands-on to the extent that I love to interact with the employees. I spend a lot of time in communications with employees, whether it's town hall meetings, employee roundtables, one-on-one discussions. I usually have mentoring relationships with a half dozen or a dozen employees at one time. Um, that's my preferred way of making a difference. I use a, a, a broad array of, uh, of communication uh, channels to get my message out and to make contact with my employees. Town hall meetings are one of those. Um, I run a town hall meeting once a quarter and we, we do a webcast. So through that I'm able to connect with 400, 500, I think the largest number we ever connected with was about 700 employees at one time. And, and those are highly interactive. So we start out with some presentation material and then we have uh, very interactive Q&A sessions. I do round tables, small groups, 20 to 25 employees, very intimate, and it's all just about them telling me, asking what questions they may have, telling me what's, uh, what's on their mind, what's important. I also run a blog, it's called Ask Greg. Um, uh, questions can, and can be posted there anonymously and, and through that the entire organization, uh, all of the employees get, have an opportunity to read my answer to those questions. So those are, those are some of the traditional and, and non-traditional uh, channels that I use for, for my communication style. Well, I think it starts with interesting and challenging jobs. If you don't offer interesting and challenging jobs to employees, you cannot be an employer of choice. Um, we're not known for paying the highest compensation and benefits. That's really not the kind of company we are. Uh, but we do believe that if we offer interesting, challenging positions to, at, a, at, a, at a competitive compensation, uh, that people will uh, work for us and will produce for us. We have very low turnover. Um, and uh, in, our, in our ranks and, and I think a lot of that is because of our focus on, our focus on open communications, uh, on diversity in our organization. One of the, one of the best uh, organizations that I've been part of in Bayer was our Bayer Diversity Advisory Council and some of the network groups that have come out of that, such as our links for, uh, for our new employees and uh, wings for our, uh, for our, our, our women uh, and our access, which is for our uh, African-American employees. So we encourage networks to get people engaged and through that to keep them, uh, keep them engaged and happy as employees. Well, there, there's clearly a balance. I mean, let's say there's certainly an interaction between profitability and, uh, and corporate responsibility. 
if I'm not making money, I'm not viable on a long term, and I'm not going to be creating jobs and, do, and creating the kind of revenue that a community needs, obviously. So we have to be focused there. But, uh, but uh, on, the, you know, on the other hand, it's not all about coming in and, 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 and milking an organization or a, or a, or a, co a community and uh, creating only profit. It's also about giving back. Uh, we do that through our volunteerism of our employees. We do it through our Bear USA Foundation to support uh, charities that are important, that we believe are important to the community. Uh, we do it through our United Way activities. I think it's, a, it's, all, it's all part of uh, everything in balance uh, and the balance between corporate social responsibility and profitability is a, is a key one that, that I think we strike quite well. Public policy has a significant impact on our business. Quite frankly, it actually can have a larger impact on our business results than many of the decisions that we make every day uh, as executives or managers down in the organization. So for that reason, I think it's critically important that our employees are educated and that they're involved in the process and that they are having a dialogue with their elected representatives. So what I believe the role of the CEO is, is, a, is to somewhat an educator. We don't educate on all issues of public policy, but we identify the, the, the vital few that are very important to our business. We educate our employees about those issues. We don't tell them what the right answer is. We educate them on the full uh, on, the, on the full spectrum of the issue, we ask them to get engaged and you know, at some point in time, if it's appropriate, we will also share with them the company perspective or the company position on that. And, and hopefully, uh, they would see it our way. But they would see it our way as a result of being educated, not because we told them what the answer was. I would advise students to first and foremost select a career path doing something that makes them happy. Um, something that also allows them to be true to their belief and value system. If they have that, they will start on the right path. The next thing that I would tell uh, a, a student who is um, coming out and going into the workforce is don't be in a rush for that first promotion or the next promotion. I view a career as a pyramid, not as a ladder. A pyramid is a structure with a broad base that can survive uh, the, the attacks of the elements for many, many years, and, uh, and that's what I think is critical for a career. Um, so take the time to develop a base, understanding the, all aspects of how a business operates, rather than being in a rush for the promotion.